Ho, 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 it's Santa Matt. Can you tell that I meant to record this video before Christmas? I even bought some beard mints, I had everything set up, and then I had to go see family for the holidays, so I did not have time to record this. But hey, it is now 2019, I'm Matt Johnson, and today I want to talk to you about my favorite camera gear from 2018. If this video format sounds familiar, it is pretty common, but my specific inspiration has come from Mr. Philip Bloom, who for the past two years has made videos that are very similar to this that I've absolutely loved. Don't worry, our favorite video gear lists are very different and I will make sure to link to his gear video down in the video description. So yes, this video is mostly going to be about gear that came out in 2018. And most of it I've either purchased myself or rented or had hands-on experience with. I've also thrown in some gear that came out before 2018 but I didn't actually purchase until 2018 that I now use and love all the time. I've also thrown in some services that I've started using in 2018 that I love as well. Also, side note, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid by any of these companies to talk about this gear. I bought it myself with my own money. Okay, moving on. Took out the beard ornaments for professionalism. Okay, we'll start off with a heavy hitter right off the bat, my favorite camera of 2018. In case you weren't aware, 2018 was a completely nuts year for new camera releases. Specifically, the months of August and September kind of blew my mind because in that two month period, really like a month and a half long period, we saw new cameras announced from Nikon with their full frame mirrorless camera, Canon with their full frame mirrorless camera, Fuji announced a new camera, Blackmagic announced a new one, and Panasonic's also like, hey, we got a full frame mirrorless coming next year. That was insane. Not to mention, we also saw the release of the Sony a7 III, the Panasonic GH5S. I'm sure that I'm missing some. It was just a crazy, crazy year overall. Of course, you're probably wondering, Matt, okay, that's great. What was your favorite camera though? You can probably guess the Sony a7 III. I wish I had one here that I could hold to show you, but unfortunately I only rented it. I have not bought one yet, but that may change in the near future. For now though, look at these beautiful pictures that I've pulled from the internet. This camera is amazing for wedding filmmakers. The video quality is very similar to the a7S II that I love, but Sony has fixed a lot of the issues that came with that camera. The battery life is nearly three times better, the autofocus is much improved, and there's actually a record button now. This camera is incredible incredible if you do any sort of run and gun shooting. But I hear you now saying, Matt, what about the other cameras? That's a lot of cameras. You gotta have like some of those, right? Okay, I will give you two honorable mentions. And unfortunately, I've not had hands-on time with either of these cameras, but I've heard very good things. The first is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, which is really what people have been wanting from Blackmagic, I think. Small, 4K, shoots and raw for a reasonable price. I've heard mixed reviews about the battery life for this camera, but from a spec standpoint and image quality, this camera looks like a tiny powerhouse. My second honorable mention comes from a company whose consumer brand is not usually associated with super high quality video. I'm speaking, of course, of the Fuji X-T3. We knew this camera was coming. They made an X-T2, of course, they're gonna make an X-T3. But from a video quality standpoint, they have made a massive jump forward. 4K at 60. 10-bit, crazy video quality from a camera line that is not necessarily known for having crazy video quality. And I think in the future, whenever we talk about camera brands that offer high quality for a reasonable price, Fuji is now gonna be included in that conversation. For all the other camera companies out there, better luck next year making my favorite list of video cameras. I really am hoping that the Sony a7S III is on next year's list. Let's get a bit weird here now because I have one other camera category and this is a bit more non-traditional but still video related. In case you didn't hear, me and my wife Rachel were having a baby in 2019, which is super exciting and simultaneously terrifying, which means there are tons of baby gadgets that I've been looking into, specifically ways to video monitor our baby. That got me going down the path of looking at wireless video solutions, and then I started looking at security cameras, and before you know it, I had wired up our house with security cameras, and I want to talk to you about my favorite security video camera that could also double as a baby monitor if you want to. This this is the Wise Cam, and it records in 1080p with night vision if you want it. 24 seven to an internal micro SD card. Additionally, if any motion is detected by this camera, it will automatically upload a video clip to the cloud where you can view it for free 
for up to 14 days. It is also USB powered, and did I mention that it only costs $25? <laughs> when I found this thing, I ended up buying a lot of them because it's just so cheap and just so cool. I'm a big fan of this small camera, and if you're into home security or baby monitoring or anything else like that, I highly recommend checking it out. I will link to this camera as well as all of the other gear that I talk about in the description of this video. Next category is my favorite tripod. And this tripod came out before 2018, but 2018 was the first year that I bought one, so I am including it in this list. My favorite tripod of 2018 is the Manfrotto Be Free Live. If you are a traveling filmmaker, this is the tripod that I recommend that you buy. I have brought this tripod along with me to Iceland, to Alaska, to New Mexico, and it is very well built while also being very tiny and very light. It's great for throwing in a suitcase if you have a destination wedding to film or something like that, but do keep in mind that it is still a travel tripod, so it's not gonna be as sturdy as a full-size, heavier, beefier tripod. That said though, the Manfrotto Be Free Live, if you travel, this is my favorite tripod of 2018. Next, we have my favorite light of 2018. Much like the tripod, this light came out before 2018, but 2018 was the first year that I bought it, and now I love this light, so of course I'm gonna include it in this list. The light is, of course, the Practolite 602, which I have made a review about, which I'll link to up in the corner and down in the description if you wanna check it out. This light feels like it was built for wedding filmmakers, and the only real con of it is the nearly $1,000 price tag. For that cost, though, you do get a light that is dimmable by color and it has a very clever smartphone app that lets you remotely control your light from across a dance floor. I absolutely love this light and really can't imagine myself shooting weddings without it now. For the next category, let's talk about music, specifically my favorite music licensing website of 2018. There were two big changes in the world of music licensing in 2018. The first was in April, whenever Musicbed announced that they would be rolling out a membership option for music licensing, which basically means that you can now license unlimited music from their library. I've always loved Musicbed's music, and being able to download an unlimited amount of it for way cheaper than what I used to spend licensing each song is so great. That's why Musicbed is my favorite music licensing site of 2018. I did say that there were two changes in the world of music licensing though, and the second change came from Soundstripe, whenever they announced Soundstripe Premium, which gives you access to over 10,000 sound effects, as well as access to music stims that you can use to remix the music that you license from Soundstripe however you want. For this, Soundstripe earns a honorable mention. Time to talk about a popular piece of gear, my favorite camera gimbal of 2018. Now, I've been shooting with the Zhiyun Crane 2 since late 2017, and I really love that gimbal. But this past summer, DJI released the Ronin S, and people love that gimbal as well. So, which one of these is my favorite gimbal? This is gonna be a tie between these two gimbals, because while I do believe the Ronin S is better than the Crane 2, it is not better enough to necessarily make me switch and spend another $700 to buy this gimbal over the Crane 2. But if you have not purchased a camera gimbal, buy the Ronin S, you're gonna love it. From my limited experience with the Ronin S, I do believe that it's easier to use than the Crane 2, specifically because of its 45 degree camera mount that makes it easier to view the screen, and it's easier to grip handle over the Crane 2. That said though, I do like the interchangeable batteries of the Crane 2 over the Ronin S. Next category is my favorite service of 2018. And this is a bit of a weird category, but considering that I use this service every single time that I'm making either a YouTube video or a wedding film, I figured that I would mention it. My favorite service of 2018 is Rev.com's captioning service. Captions are more important than ever in 2018, not only because they help people with hearing disabilities, but also because so many people watch videos on Facebook on their phones with the sound muted. So if you do not have captions, people are not gonna know what people are saying in your video. Instead of trusting Facebook's or YouTube's automatic captioning, which is always a crapshoot, or attempting to type out the captions myself and make sure that everything syncs up, instead, I pay Rev.com $1 per minute of my video and they have a real human type up the captions and it looks awesome. This is completely worth it to me and why Rev.com is my favorite service of 2018. I also have a link down in the description of this video where you can get a coupon for $10 off your first video captions order. I hope it helps you out. Time for another big category, my favorite drone of 2018. My favorite drone is of course, the Mavic 2 Pro. I recently completed a review of this drone. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it up in the corner and down in the description. Why is the Mavic 2 Pro my favorite? In a nutshell, the Mavic 2 Pro gives you the video quality of a Phantom 4 Pro, but in the size of a Mavic. 
I love it. I will give an honorable mention to another drone that also came out in 2018, the Mavic Air. That drone is even smaller than the Mavic 2 Pro and still has very good image quality. I do wish that DJI could improve the image transmission quality of that drone though. Unfortunately, it's not nearly as good as the Mavic 2 Pro. Almost done. My favorite piece of audio gear that I purchased in 2018, it didn't come out in 2018, but I purchased it in 2018, is the Tascam dr 10 l in white. I now use this microphone and recorder to to stealthily mic the bride on a wedding day, and it sounds so good. I will link to my video that I made about miking the bride up in the corner and down in the description if you wanna check it out. Let's end this thing with a bonus round. My favorite piece of relaxation gear from 2018 is the Nintendo Switch. As someone that enjoys playing video games but does not have a ton of time to sit down on the couch and like set up and be like, okay, I gotta play. This thing, small, portable, it has enabled me to actually be able to play video games and have a lot of fun and it's very relaxing. Also, I'm including this because I need more friends to play Super Smash Bros this ultimate with. My friend code will be listed here and down in the description. Let's play! And that is my list of favorite gear and services from 2018. I'm sure 2019 will bring lots of gear as well. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Is there way more painful to take off than they are to put on? Oh, ow. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Did you? Ow. Oh, that one definitely got a hair. Ow. Never using these again. <laughs> Maybe till next year.